Hello. Decided I wanted to get out of the house today. That been <sighs> hadn't spent time down in the park uh, for for a bit, and uh, it's kind of beautiful here. So this one's a park vlog instead of a tea vlog. So last time I was talking about um it's hot today so if you're wondering why I'm all sweaty last time I was talking about uh I wrote this art theory art philosophy essay uh kind of proposing a definition of art and I said I was going to talk about it today or in the next vlog which is today so there's a thing there's like an operating principle that like music theorists talk about which I kind of love and the idea is that the purpose of music theory is to figure out what happened and how to describe that it's not like a correct music theory interpretation of a piece of music is putting into words how people hear it. So like, you can talk about properties of uh, music. You can, you can come up with stories about this is, um, a, uh, this particular chord is this specific, like, major nine sus four something, or whatever. Um, and, like, a lot of the time, actually, there's more than one interpretation that's plausible on the page. And, like, the question of what is this piece of music doing, like, whatever names you put on it has to answer how people hear it. So, this uh, music theory YouTube channel that I've recently become a big fan of, 12 Tone, talks about... Wow, where... Where is my brain at? I've completely forgot what I was segueing to. Uh, did a video recently that was talking about how music is kind of in a rare position among art forms in that it's really widespread, it's really accessible, and like there isn't this kind of sense that you have to be part of some special elite to understand it, create it, listen to it, and so forth. Talk about it. And so, like, I'll, like, Twelve Tones talking about how music theoreticians get a certain amount of distrust, and some of them do things that earn them this distrust, because there's the sense that they're taking music away from the general population. And so, the point of the video was to say, hey, our job isn't to do that. Our job is to help you understand why the music you love works. And we can't explain everything, but we have a tool set. And some of those things can really, like, clarify what it is about this chord progression in this song, what it is about the harmonies in this song that contribute to the feeling it produces. So, throughout this introduction, I've been talking about the correctness of music theory as stemming from how people experience music. And again, this is a case where music is really ubiquitous. It's kind of accessible to 
the vast majority of people. And I think that might obscure to some extent the degree to which hearing music and understanding what you're hearing is a skill. It's something people learn how to do. They don't learn it with words, but they learn how to do it. They, they, like, they, like, like people who are fans of electronic music learn to anticipate the drop. Uh, people who are fans of jazz learn how to appreciate the um, more, I think jazz musicians call them colorful chords that jazz frequently uses, um, sometimes spicy. It can get really weird, but like once you get used to that, you can start like hearing what's happening in the weirdness. And so, um, like we listen to a bunch of music just because we're surrounded by it in our lives, not even counting like bird song and stuff, just like literally recorded music. We, our lives are, we have so many opportunities to listen to it. Uh, it's just a really common part of our presence and a lot of people just add even more to it. Like, I'm going to go read a fanfic, let me put on some background music while I read the fanfic. I'm gonna play Minecraft. Oh wow, video games are just full of background music, whether you use the background music, just built into the game. Like, I usually am listening to other music when I'm playing Minecraft, but like, yeah. Point being, we're very good at understanding music. As like, in general, most people are very good at understanding music. There are exceptions. I've met exceptions, but like it's it's really common that people know how to understand music. Other art forms it might be less common, but like I came to this definition when I was thinking about poetry because I was like, okay, how do you define poetry? Well, it is like taking the taking the two kind of sort of the intentional the, the the kind of functional part of language which is the way it creates meaning and the just the f mere, mere fact of language being made up of sounds and bring these together so that the sounds and the meaning are both part of a piece of art. It's why people use rhyme and assonance and alliteration. They are connecting the sounds of different words. It's why people use poetic meter. It's they, they are creating a strong rhythm in words. It's why you have repeated words in in oratory is you you repeating these words gives additional meaning to them this is this is an adequate definition but there is poetry which is written for the page concrete poetry where it's incredibly unclear how you would perform this out loud. And like, while I was talking about it with a friend of mine, I was like, I could write a poem that was emoji, like all emoji. And the emoji, as opposed to the sound, is the fundamental unit of the poem. And like, instead of assonance, you might have similar color emoji instead of rhyme, you might have similar types of emoji. Instead of uh, alliteration, you might have similar shapes of emoji. And that would still be a poem, even if it was impossible 
to pronounce in a way that captured the poeticness of it. And so I'm just going to bring these two chains together. We learn how to appreciate art. We learn how to appreciate music. We learn how to appreciate poetry. We develop skills. We can hear when one chord in a piece of music leads into another. We can hear when a rhyme is surprising or fitting or boring. Um, we can, we can be delighted by a metaphor. There's this Joni Mitchell song, um, Case of You, and it's not talking about, like, a medical case. It's talking about a case of alcohol. And it's just, like, this is this weird metaphor for being into somebody. And it's just really cool, because it's like, why would that be the metaphor you use? But I can see where you're coming from. Um, we have these skills that we've developed to understand art. We appreciate light and color. Um, Hopefully the framing of this shot is decent. I tried to get a bit of the lake behind me. Um, and like I'm on one side and the lake's sort of on the other side of the shot. That is an artistic decision and you can evaluate whether it worked, whether it didn't, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. There's a toy, uh, not toy, um, there's a like miniature railroad in this park that um, uh, kids can ride around and it just goes on this course through the park so you get um, blowing of the little what's it when they're crossing the bike path anyway trail I don't know that I've seen a ton of bikes go along here anyway uh, point what I was talking about was the skill of appreciating art which is made up of a bunch of other little skills and it's made up of kind of second level skills of connecting parts of this experience together connecting uh, the meaning of the words to their positions uh, in the melodic arc of a song and all kinds of complexity like that. Uh, the way I define art is basically two steps indirect. Art is what we can appreciate with the skills that we gained by experiencing art and appreciating art. We read poetry, and we learn how to read poetry, and we develop a taste for poetry, um, a, a palate, a, a, a appreciation, a delight in. And we find something that we find that same delight in, and that's why it's poetry in my book. Video games, we can talk about how We can talk about how, like, the artistic palette in video games sets a tone. The style can communicate something about the nature of the experience. Pac-Man is all, like, fun, bubbly, bright colors, like neon or whatever. Um, it, so it, it is this kind of... It, it is this... this, this fun, bouncy experience is kind of the, the feeling, even if it's a really tense game. It sets a tone of, you know, it's just a bunch of fun. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Missile Command has just this very stark 
bright explosions, lines of, thin lines of contrails of missiles coming in and counter missiles going out. Um, that sells this kind of violence and fear and just ultimately the simplicity of the situation. The, the, these cities are under attack. You are trying to save them. You, <coughs> in, um, in the video game Night in the Woods, there's a, uh, bass playing minigame and the controls are awkward and that's just a brilliant touch because the character you're playing in that game, May Borowski, is out of practice with her bass. She hasn't played since she went off to college and she doesn't know any of the songs she's trying to play. She hasn't practiced them. She doesn't practice much in the game. Like you can practice a couple times, you can like play two songs in a day and then she's like, yeah, I'm done. I don't want to practice anymore. She's not that dedicated a student and so and she's trying to play the songs at full speed. I don't know how many of you have been have tried to learn a musical instrument but there's a very there's a very particular experience of playing a song faster than your competence and Night in the Woods nails that experience. Like, you're, where are your fingers? What's going on? Oh crap, I played the wrong note, but I have no time to fix it because the song's still going. The, 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 there's no opportunity to do anything, and there's this clash of like, oh god, I played the wrong note, but you keep going because you're in the middle of a performance. Go! With it's gameplay, Night in the Woods conveys that. And that ties in perfectly with the story it's telling with its narrative. And that's an art conversation. That's an art appreciation conversation. That is me putting into words how the details of this experience impacted me artistically as someone who appreciates art. So, like, video games are art. They can do that. You can talk about video games in terms of artistic experiences, artistic appreciation in terms of, of, of unity of themes, and etc. and so on. Art. Textiles are art. You can talk about the aesthetic properties of textiles. It doesn't matter that they're useful. And I love that about this definition, which is why I feel so weird talking about it, because it's like, oh my god, I have this brilliant idea that everyone should hear. But it, I really like this idea that I've had of defining art by how well you can apply your skills of appreciating art to it. Because so much of how art is defined is about putting art on a pedestal and you put stuff on pedestals to say that it is above the viewer. It's and it's not. It's it's a thing that you experience that somebody made and you got something out of. That's what art is. That's what art means. That's, and, and it doesn't matter if it meets these old criteria to me, because so much of these old criteria is just a bunch of snobbery, which is kind of what I was talking about in a couple vlogs in the past, is this, is, is my frustration with the snobbery because the appreciation is what matters to me and if you can talk about art appreciation using 
a video game or a, a catalog of industrial products or anything else, then you've said something worthwhile. Or you haven't, but that's because you... It, it is the fact of something... It's entirely possible to say something worthwhile. If you've... If, if, if what you say means something larger than I liked it, then that's something to treasure. And I don't think there's a benefit to be had in telling people that they're wasting their time when they're saying stuff about something which is not in this art world conception of art. I kind of trailed off. But yeah, that's my definition, is art is what people appreciate as art. We learn to appreciate art. No, I'm not going to talk about what kind of arts we 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 gain this appreciate we gain the skill through, but we learn to appreciate art, and we can whether or not we do we can use that skill on a lot of things, and to some extent that just makes them art. Thank you very much for your time.